Hello all, welcome to the lecture. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss some important science and tech section that is very much uh, important for the upcoming uh, UPSC prelims exam. And we are going to see what are these particular topics that were there in news and they hold a quite a good certificate, right? So let's start discussing them. Let us talk about neutrino oscillations. So space time induces neutrino oscillations. What is this neutrino oscillations and what are neutrinos? So Indian scientists recently have shown that the geometry of space and time can cause neutrinos to oscillate. Now, when I am using this term neutrino, what is the meaning of neutrinos? So neutrinos is a subatomic particle that is very similar to an electron but has no electrical charge and a very small mass which might be equivalent to zero also. So since neutrinos are electrically neutral, they are not affected by the electromagnetic forces which act on electrons. Hence, they are also called as ghost particles. So another name for them is ghost particles, right? So neutrinos are affected only by a weak subatomic force which is of a much stronger range than electromagnetism okay so therefore uh, they are able to pass through great distances in matter without being affected by it so they are also one of the most abundant particles you will find in the universe so neutrinos are considered to be some kind of mysterious particles so they are produced in nuclear reactions in the sun in your stars or any other uh, place right so what they do is that they oscillate meaning what do i mean by when i say oscillate that different type of neutrinos change into one another and this particular observation has been found through lots of experiments so probing of oscillation of neutrinos and the relations with mass are very crucial in studying the origin of the universe so neutrinos interact very weakly with uh, everything else and a neutrino spin always points in the opposite direction of its motion so these are some of the characteristics you will find in the neutrinos and until a few time ago right what was the basic notion that neutrinos were believed to be massless that was the thing that was considered. So the geometry of when I talk about geometry of space, when I talk about geometry of space and time, they can cause these neutrino oscillations to quantum effects. And even if these neutrinos are considered to be massless. So Einstein's theory of general relativity, it says that gravitation, when I speak of gravitation, so this gravitation is the manifestation of space time curvature so space time induces a quantum force in addition to gravity between every two fermions also so neutrinos electrons protons and other particles which are in the category of fermions show a certain peculiarity when they move in presence of gravity another important news is related to Hessian worlds. So, some astronomers they have identified a new class of exoplanets known as Hessian planets. When I say Hessian, it actually means the word that has been derived and it means hydrogen and oxygen. So, planet wide oxygen and hydrogen atmosphere might cover these worlds. So, they are uniquely alien and up to 2.6 times the diameter of the and temperature is around 200 degrees Celsius and there is a thick hydrogen atmosphere. So this places them somewhere between Earth and your giant planets like Uranus or Neptune. So these, plan these planets, exoplanets, unlike most mini Neptunes, they may have a kind of a solid surface like Earth and many of the icy candidates are larger. They are much hotter as compared to Earth but still would be able to host large oceans. So when I say that some Hessian orbits, they are so close to their star that they're tidally locked. 
with one hot day side and one other. One is eternally in dark night side. And some orbit very far away, receiving very little stellar radiation, but light, you know, it could exist even on such extreme Hessians also. So what is the significance of this particular finding? The conditions on such planet, it is said that might be similar to some of the most uh, extreme aquatic in environments that exist in our planet. But, uh, and there is also saying that they could support at least a microbial life. So that is the thing that we need to know. Hessian worlds would greatly accelerate the search for life as well. Also, that whether life exists beyond Earth or not. So, exoplanets, when I use the concept is that we should know what are exoplanets. So, exoplanets, another term that I can use for them is extrasolar planets, right? So, this is also a term that I use for exoplanets. So, what do I mean by exoplanet? So, exoplanet is a planet outside the solar system. And the first time discovery of an exoplanet was made in the year 1992. And till date, if you want to know the number, what is the prox number? It is around 4,400 exoplanets have been discovered till now. So they are very hard to see directly with the telescope. That is the thing that you know, discovery is not easy. So they are hidden by the bright glare of the stars they orbit. So astronomers, they have, you know, used different ways to detect and study exoplanets such as looking at the effect of these planets. They have on the stars, they orbit. Another important topic that we have to study is Mission Lucy, Lucy by NASA. So this is a NASA, what is the full form of NASA? National Aeronautical and Space Administration is set to launch Lucy mission. So what is this Lucy mission? So this is Lucy mission is the first mission which is going to explore the Jupiter Trojan asteroids. Okay, so significance of Lucy mission, who has launched it? What is this particular Lucy mission regarding to? So this mission Lucy is named after Lucy, uh, which is a 3.2 million old year ancestor who belong to species of means and the safe craft will be launched on an Atlas V401 rocket. Talking about the duration of this mission. So Lucy mission is a solar power mission, which is estimated to be around 12 years long. During which the safe craft will visit eight asteroids covering a distance of around 6.3 billion kilometer. And to give us a better understanding of the young solar system. What is the significance? See, one thing that we have to be clear is when I say Trojan asteroids, what are Trojan asteroids? So Trojan asteroids, they are believed to be formed from the same material that led to the formation of the planets and that to 4 billion years ago. So we should know uh, how much old are the planets, how much old are the oceans, right? So the mission is desi designed to, you know, understand the composition of the diverse asteroids, that how they are formed, that they are the part of the Trojan asteroids forms. So determine the mass and density, densities of the materials and to look for and study the satellites and ring that may orbit the Trojan asteroids also. So scientists are more concerned about understanding the origin, the evolution, right? That is something more important for them. So what are asteroids? When you're studying this concept, definitely we need to know what are asteroids. So asteroids are rocky objects and these rocky objects orbit the sun. And are they equal to planets? No, they are much smaller in size. So they are also called minor planets. So minor planets is a name for asteroids. Talking about the main belts of asteroids. So first those found in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. This region, this particular region is, you know, it contains around 1.9 million asteroids. The second group is that of Trojans. So we are studying the categories. The first is a main belt and then Trojans. So 
what are trojans these are asteroids that share an orbit with a larger planet so nasa reports the presence of jupiter neptune and mars trojans and in 2011 they reported an earth trojan as well so the jupiter asteroids can be found in what are termed as swarms that lead and follow the planet jupiter along its orbit around the sun so lucy will reach the first swarm of these asteroids that precede jupiter by august 2027 so these asteroids are believed to be the remnants of the early solar system so the third classification of asteroid is under near earth asteroids what are these near earth asteroids which have orbit that pass that pass close to the earth so those that cross the earth's orbit are called earth crossers also another important topic that we are going to study is the inspiration 4 mission this mission is all more important because it has been launched by spacex right so all more important so it was launched from nasa's kennedy space center and a crew aboard a crew dragon capsule in a space at falcon n9 rocket for an earth orbiting mission so this is the world's first all civilian mission to orbit and it is largely made up of civilians with no professional space experience so although the crew has gone and undergone some basic training but it is considered to be the first all civilian mission to orbit so what is this mission inspiration 4 mission so this is going to orbit the earth at around 575 km which is higher than your international space station which is around 408 km and even your hubble space telescope which is at around 4 547 km so this will be the farthest distance that would be traveled by a crewed mission since 2009 so inspiration 4 is the third space flight by billionaire in 2021 the other two uh, both sub orbital missions were the flight of virgin galactic founder richard branson and company employees aboard the unity 22 mission that was held on july 11 and other was the flight of blue origin who was the founder by founder jeff bezos and three other passengers were also there who flew abroad a new shepard space craft on july 20 why is this journey significant see this particular journey is providing us some opportunity because it is believed that a lot of information a lot of data will be collected health data right health data is going to be collected and this data is going to help in planning future crewed space missions also so this will collect data on your electrocardiography activity that is ecg movements heart rate rhythm blood oxygen saturation cabin noise light intensity lot other things are going to be covered over the journey next another important topic is chandrayaan 2 mission So we know that Chandrayaan 2 is India's second mission to the moon, and it failed to make a soft landing on the lunar surface. But the mission is still very relevant in the current context because, despite the failure, the mission's orbiter and other parts have been functioning normally, which are still gathering certain information. So the ISRO. it released the information that is gathered by the scientific payloads till now and some of which were still to be analyzed in assess so the orbiter and the other instruments of chandrayaan 2 mission they have in 2 years gathered a wealth of new information that has added to the knowledge about the moon and its environment so what is the information that has been gathered so presence of water molecules on moon has been found and some precise information about h2 molecules have been received there are presence of some minor elements like uh, chromium magnesium and sodium has also been found and it is going to pave a way for the scientists to understand the composition of moon in a much better way right and there are information about solar flares also that a large number of microflares outside the active region have been observed for the first time and according to isro this has great implications on the understanding of the mechanism behind heating of the solar curve 
So exploration of the permanently shadowed region as well as craters and boulders and the regulators also another opportunity for us to understand it. So Chandrayaan 2 mission was considered to be a failure, but we cannot say that completely it's a failure because certain uh, parts of this particular mission, they remain active in form its orbiters hovering over the moon. Mm -hmm. Scientists used the XSM, the solar X-ray monitor on board Chandrayaan 2 in September 2019 to study the sun. The primary objective of the Chandrayaan 2 was to demonstrate the ability to soft land on the lunar surface and operate a robotic rover of the on the surface. So the mission consisted of your orbiter, lander and rover. And all of them were equipped with scientific instruments basically to study the moon. So with this, we have covered the Chandrayaan 2 mission also. So thank you. With this, we end the lecture here.